So I met my wife, I think it was winter of 2000, got married June of 2002. I knew she was one the first day we went on. She was everything I wish I was, everything that I wanted, everything good that I was. And to be able to keep her, I had to lie and cover and uh, conceal even more. In the world, I was the perfect guy. You know, everything had everything going for me. But inside, I was rotten to the core. So I began to realize that I had a problem early on. I grew up in a small town just south of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Normal childhood, grew up in church. Uh, mom and dad, two sisters. But things started to change when I hit puberty at the age of 12, 13. My father never had to talk about purity, never had to talk about sexual stuff. It was a very, it's, it's a very awkward conversation. I think if we would have had that, I would have known and been able to probably not get into the stuff I got into. I was kind of left alone to figure it out by myself. I can remember this day, the first time back then, a buddy of mine, his dad had a VHS tape, a porn video. The first time I saw it, the, the adrenaline rush and the excitement that came over me it was intoxicating. My parents, when I was a freshman in college, divorced. My father had an affair. And it was a crucial time being 19, my father just disappears from the household. And it's me, my mother, and my sisters. And the internet was just coming along. Uh, and that's when I started to look at pornography on the internet uh, secretly. As the addiction pro progressed, uh, at first, I felt like I had control of it. I would find ways here or there to look. But I found myself when I went off to college and I'm alone in a room by myself. It got to the point where it began to consume me. My grades began to lack. I didn't even care about classes, skipping classes, being late, calling in sick to work because I was staying up too late looking at stuff or chatting with females online. There was nobody really in my life because I began to isolate myself. And even being as a police officer, I came really close to throwing it all away and losing my career. And what I realized now is I was heavily addicted. I met my wife, uh, I had already started my career as a police officer and was going back to college to finish my degree because I started before I graduated. She reminded me of a purity. Um, she was innocent, she was moral. She grew up in church, attended church. She was who I was before I got trapped and caught up in sexual sin. And it really wasn't until I got married it was my first year in our marriage when I got exposed. It was our one year anniversary, we're in Florida, and she's asleep, I thought she was asleep. And I began to watch uh, a porn video, and she got up and walked in, and I'll, I'll never forget, what are you doing? It was just this fear. Oh my gosh, I've been caught. It was actually a relief, because I've been keeping the secret, the things I've been doing private for, for years. Began to reach out for help. Kinda got the cold shoulder, like, oh, everybody struggles with it. Here's a book. But it wasn't going away. Once I put Covenant Eyes on my phone, it was one of the first steps of getting free. It didn't happen overnight. It took, it took a couple years of struggling and, and stumbling. But by doing that, it um, helped me to think about my actions before I actually act out. It was about 2008 when things began to change. It was just after our second daughter was born. Uh, and I remember it was my birthday. I still can't explain it, but it was a, a life-changing moment where chains were dropping. It's like the light bulb clicked. The confidence that comes with freedom is a beautiful thing. Walking in this world, doing what I do for a living, being an investigator, being able to go in and ask certain questions that need to be asked in investigations without in the back of my mind going, I do that. Regaining the trust of my wife uh, has brought about a it's a beautiful relationship, a trusting relationship that God created for many women to have. But I began to discover through the process uh, in reading the Bible, understanding what generational sin is. My grandfather struggled with it. My father struggled with it. And I struggled with it. And me and my wife have this saying that we're Joe and Jennifer Kimmons, generation one because we're the ones that have broken and broken the generational sin 
And it's a beautiful thing to see how my daughters don't even really understand. They're innocent. I mean, my 16-year-old is still innocent, and that's so beautiful that she doesn't have to struggle with the things I struggle with. Still a work in progress. We're all gonna be works in progress till the day we die, but until you understand what grace is and you can give yourself grace, you're not gonna really truly recover. And it was when I began to understand what freedom was. And then God came in and did the rest. I'm so grateful of what God has done for me. And I can assure you, if he can do it for me, he can do it for you.